<laughs> you know, power tools, <laughs> power tools are not just for the garage. Today we're going to talk about a power tool, which is the digital dual feed for the Baby Lock Altair. And if you thought you didn't need a power tool, <laughs> Well, I think I'm going to change your mind. This is the power tool that I think you're going to want. I'm Kathy, and this is Sewing Tech Talk. So we have a giveaway for today's video. We have this great pack of embroidery thread, which you can actually use to quilt as well. So uh, every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win a great pack of thread. So good luck with that. Yes, let's talk about a power tool today. And I know I keep saying that, but it really is a power tool. This is the digital dual feed. Baby Lock, that's what Baby Lock calls it. On Brother Machines, it's called the Move It Foot. And the reason it's called that is because it's, it's a huge accessory, isn't it? It has a motor back in here, and this little tail attaches to the machine. So that means that the band that's on the bottom actually moves at the same speed that the machine does, unless you want it to do something different, which is one of the advantages of a foot like this. So I'm going to talk about some of the ways, uh, sewing situations, you might use this. And there are some accessory soles, because it's the foot, you can get a sole for the foot, uh, that do specialty things. Now, every time I do a video, I do do a handout for you. And what I'd like to do every once in a while is come up with a fun project. So I am going to be quilting on this fun quilt that I put together, and I have a fun setting for it. And uh, because we're doing a power tool today, I thought I would call it the buzzsaw quilt. So your handout is the instructions, uh, the layout for making the setting squares for this. And I think it's kind of a fun quilt. And you can put whatever you want in those in the focus uh, features uh, squares. You can do embroideries, you can just cut up a fabric and put it in there. Um, whatever the heck you want goes right in there. So the uh, buzzsaw quilt is kind of fun and that's your handout. You'll have instructions for that. And if you want to make it any other size, if you want to make it bigger or if you want to make it a little bit smaller, then uh, I have the, uh, the dimensions in there for that as well. So that's your handout for today. So let's talk about how this power tool is going to work. The great thing about it is it does have a motor back in here. And the way that it's different than a walking foot is it has this band that's continually in contact with the fabric. Now if you don't want that, what you can do, there's a lever on the side if you want to lift that band up or put it back down. Um, I haven't used that too much, but you can do it. There's a standard sole that comes with the foot that works great, and you just clip it, you just snap it on and off, the, the standard sole right there like that. But of course there's accessories that you can get for the foot, which is great. And we're going to talk about those today. So this is the quarter inch foot. Notice how the big profile of the feet. The feet are very wide, so there's maximum contact with the feed dogs of the machine, and you have that little band on the top. So you know you're going to get maximum control with this foot. This foot has a guide for doing your quarter inch piecing. This foot has a little hole in the front of it for doing some couching. And I want to show you what I use the couching for uh, a little bit later. This is the open toe foot. So if you're doing any kind of sewing where you really see, need to see where that needle comes down or where, um, where you're stopping and starting, because you can see these bright red guidelines really show you what are, um, where you want to have the edge of your fabric or um, anything that you want to help guide. It's right in there, easy to see. Quilting is, this foot is awesome for quilting. So this is the stitch in the ditch foot, which means it has this guide that you ride right in the ditch. And this foot can really help you get right specifically in the ditch, along with some of the great features of the machine. You can also get a quilt guide that's either on the right side or the left side of the foot. And it attaches by this little guy right up in here. There's a little guy that, uh, that comes with the guide 
and it attaches and this guide slips right inside of there. So that's if you want to do some parallel quilting, which this foot excels at, and it can, um, you can do really, really wide, um, like a grid quilt. So it works really great for that. So this, this sole comes with, these are optional soles and you can get them to add to your collection of feet because, you know, as sewers, we want to have all the toys, the fun toys. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out by showing you how I'm going to be quilting on this using the, um, using the, um, the digital dual feed, how it's going to help me control the fabric. And I'm going to be using, just another note, I'm going to be using some Decora thread because I really want my quilting to stand out. You can get a, a large put up of Decora thread. It's really big, beautiful, gorgeous rayon thread. So you can get a box that has all the different colors. And I'm sure you can get it individually too, but you know you're going to want all the colors. So I'm going to get all set up. I'm going to put these away. We're going to put the digital dual feed foot on the machine. I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to talk about these different feet and what they do. So let me clear everything away and I'll be right back. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the digital dual feet. And what you have to do is you have to take off the old ankle of the machine and this is going to go right on that post where the ankle would go. And it's going to plug into the back. That's so that the, the machine can communicate with the motor that's in the foot. So all we have to do is we're going to take it, slide it onto the back, and get down in there. We're going to thumb tighten the screw, of course. Hold on. I have to have my one hand in there. And then I'm just going to take my screwdriver and tighten that up just a little bit. And it's nice and solid on there. And then I'm going to take the plug. There's a receptacle in the back that you plug it in. And I'm just going to plug it into the back. Now, as soon as you plug in that foot, the machine knows that you've put on the digital dual feed. And the icon on the screen changes to show DF for digital feed. And it's going to gray out any of the stitches that you can't use with this foot. Basically, this foot's for going forwards and backwards, but it does not go sideways. So any stitch that would require the machine to stitch at a sideways motion, well, that stitch is going to be grayed out and you're not allowed to chew it, to choose it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap off the standard sole and I'm going to put on the open toe sole for the machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing some quilting on my little buzzsaw quilt that I came up with. So I'm going to put that on there and snap it on. And all the controls that you have for doing any kind of sewing is uh, works for the digital dual feed. Like I said, it just lets you know what you can't do with this foot. Now I've snapped, snapped on the sole, tightened it off. Let me put these down away. You're going to want to be able to decide exactly where you want to put your quilting. And the Baby Lock Altair has another great feature that I like to use called the LED guide light. And what it is, by turning on this button right here, what it does is, I don't want those, I want this one, it shines a light. So it's going to shine a guide light on the bed of the machine, on where you're sewing. And you can use that as a guide to help you get exactly a straight line or where you want to be or a distance about away from wherever you want to go. Now what's cool on the screen is what you see is what you get. So on the screen I can you can see that there's a blue line here. Let me move that guide light to the right by touching the plus button on the side over here and you can see I'm moving that light over to the right and I'm going to use it essentially as a guideline so when I'm doing my sewing. So the great thing like I said is what you see is what you get. So whatever distance you want this to be, you can literally take a measuring device and go up there. No, this is going to be probably about a half an inch. It shows it, in, shows it in millimeters for you, but you can actually take a ruler and measure what you want it to be. Now that's as far as the right as it goes, but remember, I can move my stitch and move my stitch position. So if I want this to be even bigger, what I can do is I can take the, my stitch and I can move it over to the left, and you can see I have a pretty big distance there if I wanted to do some grid quilting or some channel quilting. Now if I don't want to do that, I could actually use the accessory I talked to you about, which is the uh, which is the quilt guide. And this extends way far out. So if you don't want to do very close lines, you can do some pretty 
pretty far apart lines by just tapping that in there, putting it down, and that's going to ride on the side and give you a guide guide to to do some bigger, bigger quilting. I'm going to do something a little bit smaller right now, so I'm going to take that off, and i am just been doing about that half an inch I originally showed you. So I'm going to move my move my uh, stitch position oh, back to the center stitch position and I am using this beautiful decor thread and it's a very pretty 12 weight rayon thread. I think when I do bigger prettier threads I want a little bit longer of a stitch length so that they show out. So what I like to do is I like to lengthen the length of that stitch just a little bit so a little bit more of that thread shows and it's a decorative thread. Sometimes mm, I want that to, it's a little bit thicker. I want to have a little bit less tension on that thread. So I just take it down one click and I found that that works for me. So now these settings are not in your handout. I'm using Decora thread. I like a little bit longer stitch length. I like a little tiny bit less tension and I will use a size 90 quilting needle because it's a bigger needle to accommodate this bigger thread. So now having said that, the other thing that I do is I'm going to be dancing along the side of this quilt, but on a bigger quilt, hmm, you may want to uh, lock in your screen so you don't accidentally touch it when you have a big quilt going. So what you can do is you can touch this lock up here and that's going to lock in the screen. So if you touch it, you're not going to accidentally change your settings. Now, there's one thing about the digital dual feed that I really want to share with you, and I think it's one of the most important features of this, of this uh, sewing power tool. It has that band that's in contact with the fabric at all times, right? So what happens is I plugged it in, and it's going to move at the same speed of the machine. If you have a walking foot, what a walking foot does is it literally just lifts up so that the feed dogs on the bottom can do their thing great. If you have a roller foot, it just has a roller on the top that lets that fabric pass through. That's great. But what happens with the digital dual feed is that band, it's kind of like that band is always in touch with the fabric and it goes at the same speed of the machine unless you don't want it to. So let's dive into the settings and I want to show you something that's pretty unique to this foot. I'm going to go to the settings and uh, my digital dual feed adjustments right here on the very first page. Now notice, I'm going to touch that, there's zero, zero with a black box around it and that means <laughs> everything's going at the same speed. But if have you ever done a quilt with on the top of the quilt, it's a little bit, let me bring this one over so maybe you can see, it's a little bit puffy-ish on the top. See how I have that little puffy bit on the top right there? So if I'm coming up to this, you can see that I'm going to get a little bit of a tuck in there and I don't want that. So what I can do is I can tell this magic foot to feed a little bit more on the top than, uh, than just the standard rate that the feed dogs are pulling it through. In other words, I can ease the top of the fabric in like I could use the bottom feed dogs to do. I'm sure a few of you have done that when you've sewn before. So what I do is I go a little bit, tell, I tell the machine feed it just a little bit more on the top than you are uh, traditionally sewing it with the, with the machine. So having, now I can't tell you what number that is. It depends on your quilt. So you can experiment. One has been working great on this quilt. I did a few little uh, test pieces in the corner and that works great for me. So now we've set up the machine. Okay, everything's set. Let's lock it in and let's get some quilting done. So now I know that's, oops, let me turn my settings back on. No, I see I can't do anything with that lock. So let's take that guide light over to the right. There we go. And we're going to lock it in. Good to go. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to be stitching right along the side. I don't know if you can see it. I've stitched along the side of each one of these little areas. Now here, I don't want to go into the uh, embroidery that I've already done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right in here and have the thread magically appear through the quilt. So what I do when I do that is I do bury my quilt tails and that means I'm not going to use my scissors when I want to clip my threads because I want a long enough tail to bury. So when I threaded up the machine, I left myself a longish tail 
And in the bobbin, what I did is I threaded everything in the bobbin. No, I'm, notice, notice I'm using a matching thread for the back of the quilt. Normally I would come around here and clip that thread, but I want enough to pull up. So what I'm gonna do, there's a little notch right here and I'm just gonna let the thread hang there. I want a big enough tail to pull it up. So let's pull it on up over here and let's get to where I'm gonna start. Notice I put the open toe sole on so I can see exactly where I want to start. So I'm going to line up that LED guide light right along. I'm going to start right along in here. And what I want to do is I want to pull up that thread. So all I'm going to do is go needle down, needle back up. And when I pull it away, I can pull that thread, that bobbin thread up from the bobbin. Pop it up just like that. Pull it up and out of the way. Now, on any machine, if you just start sewing with that top thread just hanging loose, what happens is it can kind of, how does a machine work? A machine works by taking that top thread, taking it down to the bobbin area, it flows around that bobbin and it's released up to the top. Great. But this thread has nothing that it's attached to. So when it gets taken down to that bobbin area, there's really nothing to pull it back up or there's nothing to stabilize it as it gets pulled back up. So I'm gonna hold it when I first get started for this sewing. Otherwise, I'd get kind of a little thread mess on the bottom. And that's true with just about any machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, line everything back up again. Now the foot would automatically go down when I start sewing because that's the way I programmed the Altair. But I'm going to lower the foot anyway just so I can see exactly where I'm going. And I can see I'm a little bit forward. Now I'm good. So I am going to hold this thread and I'm going to get to start to sewing. All I'm going to do, press my, press my power pedal and let's go all the way up to this edge right up in here where the seam of that quilt is. Now, I don't know if you noticed it, but because I have that band on the very top, what happens is that the digital dual feed is going to help me feed that quilt all the way through. If you, this is the edge of a quilt, so it's not that challenging for it to pull through. But if I had this big giant quilt here and it was hanging over the sides, it would help the machine pull that quilt easily on through. So it works great. And I went a little fast. <laughs> want to go a little bit slower because it was rocking and rolling. So I'm going to set the speed of my machine down just a little tiny bit. Notice I did the lock on this screen over here, which means I can touch it and nothing's going to happen. But I have full use of all my buttons on the top of the machine. So now I've set it up so that the bottom, so that the uh, needle stayed down and the foot lifted up and I'm just going to turn the quilt and I'm going to finish on by using my guide light on the side on over here. And I'm just going to finish off and do that stitch at the very end. Now I've come to the edge of my quilt and I'm not going to use my scissors. Why? Well, it really wouldn't matter on the edge of the quilt because I could just cover over the bottom of those threads because every time you use your scissors, you leave a little teeny tiny tail on the back. And I don't want that on the back of my quilt. So in this instance, I'm not going to use my scissors, which I use for almost all my other sewing. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go needle up. Now, I want to pull up that foot. I want it to raise. So I use my handy foot lifter, pull the fabric away. And now, another trick that I like to use is, normally I have my little snippers. But if I have this big quilt and I'm going to cut that thread on the bottom, because remember, I didn't use my scissors. Sometimes when I cut down under here, <laughs> once I actually, I actually cut myself. So I like to use this little tool. This is the blade saver and it usually stands on a stand so that you can clip power strips away. But I use it um, uh, kind of especially when I don't want to have like scissors laying around. If you have like maybe company or anyone or if you have a sewing situation where you don't want anyone that might not understand the power of scissors, if you know what I'm saying. So I just use this, I take it on the bottom, you get it close and it just clips the thread and you're really, it's hard to really hurt yourself or cut yourself. So I'm gonna cut this up on the top up here, just like that. Now, I have a long tail for when I wanna start the next area. And I'm gonna come on over here. Well now, the LED guide light on that side really isn't going to do me much good, is it? So I'm going to shoot it on over to the other side. 
I have to unlock the screen and now I'm going to make that light go to the other side of that stitch. And I can measure and I can see, hmm, that's not quite the same distance that it was on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stitch over just a little bit to the right and I can totally measure and that's pretty much exactly where I was on the other side. So remember, the one big advantage, what you see is what you get. So I'm going to come on over here and you know the drill by now. We're going to pull up that bobbin thread. So I'm going to come up over here, line everything up. Notice how the guide light is now on the left hand side instead of the right hand side. I'm going to go needle down, needle up, lift up my foot. Oops, I put it down instead of lifting it up. Bring that thread up to the top. Line everything back up again. And just stitch my next section. I've showed you before but what I'm doing is I'm stopping right on the seam right in here to give me the perfect pivot point so I've stopped there and when I rotate it mm, let's see if I did it right that LED guide light lines up right with that seam line so I know I'm going at the right spot and the foot has helped me by pulling everything through. In fact, it pulled a little bit more on the top. So if my quilt's a little puffy on the top, then everything matches up. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you a couple other things to use with the digital dual feed. It's great for managing bias edges. And I'm going to show you a fun trick where I want to add a little accent to the edge of my uh, quilt. I'm going to quilt it at the same time. And um, I think you're going to want to see that. So let me get this all set and I'll be right back. So I'd love to show you some more things that I like to do with the digital dual feed and some of those more optional feet. So now, I, what I've done is I've changed on over and I put a darker thread in the machine because I want to show you something with that as well. But I wanted, I put on, I've snapped on the digital uh, dual feed stitch in the ditch sole, which means it has this little guide that comes and it can go right along that seam line. Now, of course, I can use the LED guide light along with that as well. And on the screen, what I can do is I can literally shift that, um, I can shift that stitch over a half a millimeter or if I want to, I can shift it over with my left, right shift a quarter of a millimeter. So that's like a thread. So I can stay on whatever side that works for me when I'm doing that stitch in the ditch. Remember, you're going to want to stitch in the valley, not in the hill. But this is something else I use that for. Sometimes when you do your quilt, every time when you quilt it, hap what happens is it kind of shrinks it on in. And you do get a little puffy right along that edge. I like to stitch that down before I put my binding on so that I know I have it under control. So what I like to do is I like to do uh, maybe a little zigzag right along that edge. And I like to have a good guide as to where my edge needs to be. Sometimes when I do my piecing, there's a little bit of difference in the little edges that come out there. So I'm going to need a guide so I can know generally that I'm doing it correctly. So this is what I like to do. I like to put that zigzag stitch right along in here, but I like to see where the binding is going to be stitched, so I'm not going to lose my points. So I like to take my guide light and I like to move it on over so that I know it's going to be along where I'm going to eventually sew my binding. Now I have this guide though on the machine and it's about a quarter inch away and it's going to be where I'm going to put that zigzag stitch. Now I don't want my zigzag stitch to come over and show after I stitch my binding on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my zigzag stitch. What you see is what you get on the screen. So I know it's to the right hand side. I can make it a little bit bigger, a little bit wider if I want to. And with that same left right shift, I can move that over just a little bit and you can see I have everything perfectly set up so when I'm stitching down my um, edge of my quilt to prepare for my binding 
I have the stitch all set up. It's easy for me to see and guide, but don't forget with the digital dual feed, you can totally control that top. Now, if I won't want a tuck when I'm coming up to this, you can see I would get one. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my settings. I'm gonna bump that up just a little bit. And I think when I'm sewing along here, it's gonna totally take that, that tuck as it were and it's going to work it on in. Now I still have to do some quilting on my quilt but I wanted to show you how this works. So let me get down there, put up that guide light, lower the foot. Yes I think that's going to work and <laughs> let's see if I set it up right. Now remember I would be using a matching thread. Here's the line coming on my seam and that guide is helping me go right along the edge of the fabric. If it looks like I'm gonna catch some of those little threads, I can stop. I've set the machine up so it automatically lifts and I can get those out of the way. I think I might white a wider zigzag, but let me show you what I've done. So remember, I would use a matching thread, but that really prepares my edge of my quilt for me to trim it and then put my binding on. So that's another thing I use that stitch in the ditch foot for. So now, let me show you a couple other things real quick. We'll get this quilt out of the way. I still have some work to do on it. So I'm gonna snap off this sole. I wanna talk a little bit to you about doing a quarter inch seam, especially on a bias edge. So, here is the quarter inch foot. Here's the quarter inch foot for the digital dual feet. Now, it still has that guide, but I want you to notice it has a few different marks. It has marks that are right at the right at the where the needle comes down, an eighth of an inch in the front and a quarter inch in the front as well. But what I really like is I like this guide because the foot is very wide. It has a big wide profile. So I want to make sure I'm using that guide when I'm doing my quarter inch. So let me quickly change it over and do a quarter inch. So I'm going to come back to my straight stitch and I'm going to move my LED guide light over to the right. And I'm going to set it up for a quarter inch. Yeah, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to make sure I do my test. I've done another video that really talks you through setting this up for a quarter inch. It's called A Quilter's Dream of a Quarter Inch Seam. And that handout is and video are available for you to watch to go into really great detail of this. But the reason I'm using my digital dual feed, especially on this process, is I have this big, long bias edge. Now, a bias edge really wants to stretch and ripple. Fabric has three different grains. It has the lengthwise grain, which is very, very little stretch. Those are the threads going up and down when the fabric is woven. It has the crosswise grain, which is the threads that go back and forth when it's being woven. And there's a little bit of stretch there, but the bias or the diagonal is where the fabric has a ton of stretch which is great if you're doing a garment that you want to have some drape, but it's really a pain if you don't want it to stretch while you're sewing. So let's go back. I don't think I need it to pull in that much, but I do want to leave it at plus one. So that way, that means that it's going to just maintain everything when I do this big long seam. Oops. There we go, we're set. Now, all I have to do is set everything up so that I have my quarter inch. I can have my guideline showing to help me do that. And as I sew this big, long quarter square triangle seam, everything's gonna stay in place. Yes, I would use matching thread, but it's gonna maintain this bias edge and I wouldn't end up with a really wave like the edge of a piece of lasagna. So that's gonna be really easy. All I have to do, put everything in place lower the boom and I'm stitching a perfect quarter inch seam without any stretch. Now I slowed it down earlier. I can really rock and roll. And 
I use dark thread. I wouldn't on my regular project, but you can see a really nice quarter inch seam. Now there's one last little accessory foot or sole that I want to show you. And I think it's really a neat one because it can add that special little touch to your quilt. So here's my little quilt. And what I want to do is it's nice, but I'd like to add a, something a little bit special right along this edge here. So I found this cording at one of those big box craft stores, and it's a really nice little cord, and it's going to add that nice little elegant edge right along my seam line. That would be kind of challenging to do if I was piecing it and putting a little piece of piping in there, but I have a special sole for the digital dual feed that allows me to put the cord into the hole. It has a little area in the back, like a little valley that the cord fits in. And I can stitch right over the top of this and quilt at the same time. So let's get everything set up. And I'm going to show you that I can add a little accent and quilt at the same time. So I have my, I like to load my cord in before I snap it on the machine. Pull that cord to the back. Here we go. Now, I'm definitely going to use my LED guide light on this one because I want to stay right in that line. But I'm going to do a tiny little zigzag to go over my cord. Now, the advantage is you remember what I keep saying. <laughs> what you see is what you get. So I'm going to come back to that zigzag. I'm going to make sure that it's the size that I want for my cord. No, I want it a little bit narrower. That looks like that'll work. And then I'm going to move that guide light right on the top of it. So I know I'm going to be stitching right on the top of my cord and my guide light's going to hold, give me a visual to put it where I want it to put it. And that foot's going to hold it right in place. Now, when I get started, I'm going to leave some extra so I can pull it down to the layers of the quilt when I'm done. Let's see what I can do. Take some time and get it just right. Everything's good. Perfect. Now I'm going to do that little zigzag over the top of the cord and add it right along that edge of that seam. I want to go slow on this one. See how the foot, the sole, is holding the cord right in place. So all I have to do is concentrate that I'm putting it in the right spot. It makes sewing so much easier if you don't have three hands, which I don't. I think I've finally gotten my mojo. Let me show you what I've done. that is and that's going to add that just that extra little something something around the edge of my quilt. I could make my zigzag maybe a little bit tinier so you don't see those lines but I kind of like them. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a deep dive into a sewing power tool. Don't forget you have a handout if you really are interested in making a fun little quilt. I like that buzzsaw quilt because it's good for guys, good for gals, good for people of all ages. So I hope you enjoy that. Play with your digital dual feed on your Baby Lock Altair, and it's available on other machine models as well. Um, so check your machine. If you have that big old digital dual feed, it's really a great power tool. I'm going to shoot it off for George. Thank you so much for watching me today, and um, I'll see you soon. Thanks, Kathy. That was an incredible presentation. Don't forget, you can click on a, the link and download Kathy's lesson guide on today's presentation. But I want to take a couple moments to share with you my favorite features on the Baby Lock Altair. I believe the Altair is dollar for dollar the most advanced machine on the market. There are machines that sell for thousands of dollars more that do not offer the same features. 
you know, the embroidery features are incredible. The nine and a half inch by 14 inch embroidery area, you can really uh, expand your horizon with embroidery and there's 494 built-in designs. You also have that 10.1 inch color screen that gives you all kinds of editing capability from color to sizing to also you can actually take designs and do automatic stippling around it. It has 30 built-in fonts and five jumbo monograms. Now with the fonts, you have all kinds of editing capability. You can even take and put in a, a name or a saying and then do an applique border and turn it into applique automatically. It also has the IQ Designer. Now, this is an app that you use your smart device like a phone uh, or an iPad, and you can send an image, a graphic image to the machine and it will turn it into embroidery instantly. The embroidery is amazing, but what about the sewing and quilting? This machine has 11.25 inches of space and five inches of height, so you can fit even the largest quilts into this machine. It also has automatic fabric sensors that will sense the thickness of the fabric so it will set the right pressure and with the automatic tension it gives you perfect fabric control from heavy denim to very sheer fabric to working with elastic or even a t-shirt collar. This machine truly controls the fabric with perfection but also it has the digital dual feed. And that what that does is that is a belt driven uh, uh, walking foot system that's controlled by the motor of the machine. And you can control even like here with this Minky perfectly. So you have so many amazing features with this machine. But what about an amazing deal? But wait, that's not all. For a limited time and while we have it in stock, we are offering a special bonus with your Altair purchase. So first, we're gonna give this beautiful set of 63 spools of polyester embroidery thread. This, the beautiful shine and quality of this thread is quite amazing. Also, I'm including uh, the Babylock Ultimate Stabilizer Bundle. This has the, uh, the most popular rolls of stabilizer from wash away to cut away in different colors. And this will enhance your embroidery to give you a better quality. I'm also including the Babylock Altair Inspirational Guide. Now, the instructions on this machine is wonderful, but what's different about the Inspirational Guide, it is written by Babylock educators. Assuming you know nothing about the machine, so it takes you through every aspect, giving you uh, full color. It's, it's over 300 pages of full color description, step-by-step -step description. And if you complete this uh, Inspirational Guide, you truly know everything on this machine. We're including that. Plus, we're gonna include a online membership to Baby Lock's Love of Knowledge. This has hundreds of videos that give you step-by-step -step details on how to use the machine and also do techniques. This is invaluable and you get a membership to this as well. You also get our famous rose gold scissors. Uh, this, these scissors are wonderful, both the shears and the embroidery shears. But last and not least, we put together a very exclusive design bundle by Anita Good Design. It has 17 different collections and it comes with over uh, 400 design files. And it's truly amazing the variety you get with this. So all this, which equals over a $1,600 value is free with your Altair purchase for a limited time. Now we will run out of these supplies, so this is while supplies last. So click on the link to order, or you can call us at 1-800-865-9664. You can email me at moreso at aol.com. But don't wait, this deal will surely end. But if you have any questions, again, call us at 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now.